Many years ago, I knew a woman by the name of Catherine Kuhlman. She had the most outstanding miracles happen. I mean, I, I, I still, when I think about her, when I think about the presence of the Spirit of God, the miracles that would occur, the blind that would see, the deaf that would hear. But then I was having dinner last night with Joan Hunter, and she said to me that there are many times they have meetings where 100% of the people are healed. Catherine Coleman used to say, I foresee the day coming in which people that walk in the presence of God will go into hospitals and the whole hospitals will clear out. Well, Joan, you said that this sort of thing is going on at your meetings. There's such a high percentage of people getting healed. And the reason that uh, I believe this is going on is you have been really prepared by God. You see, she is the daughter of Charles and Francis Hunter, and I, I have to believe, Joan Hunter, that you have witnessed with your eyes more miracles or as many miracles as any human that's ever lived. I think so. And, but uh, the thing that kind of intrigues me is you were in the back row, you were not an upfront type of individual, mm -hmm. that's all changed. And then you had 10 things happen to you uh, that, uh, or I, b I believe that uh, nine of the 10 nine things the 10. Uh -huh. would be enough to kill a person. Right. Uh, any one of them <laughs> would mm -hmm. be enough, but you had right. nine of the 10 things uh, that doctors say you're in big trouble. Uh, but uh, how does someone that's been in ministry uh, with their parents for 30 years, seen miracles from just a little child, um, how did you happen to marry a man that was a pastor that was a homosexual? Well, that kind of came out, you know, later in, in life. And, and uh, many times people say they've been free of this and free of that. And the root causes have not been taken care of. And so when stress came on, then homosexu homosexuality came on. And uh, after 25 years of marriage, we were in the ministry together, traveled the world together. And it was, um, it was, you know, I would ask him different things and he would say, well, no, that's not going on. And, and you can't get a divorce on the gift of suspicion. So I just really prayed and I said, God, what is done in darkness, let it be revealed in the light. And when I had proved positive that he was having, you know, affairs and, it, and to this day he has an unrepentive heart. And so I pray for him, you know, for God to open his eyes. And, uh, and so at that point, after 25 years, uh, you know, being emotionally starved, to say the least, then at that point, God, uh, God released me to, to get the divorce. Uh, but, but then, I mean, in addition to that, you, you didn't have much money. You, uh, uh, you develop breast cancer. They gave you what, the average is two years they to live? They say about two years. Yeah, it's two days after the divorce. You know, you're number one, you're codependent. You're dealing with a separation. Then two days later after the divorce, you get diagnosed with breast cancer. And then in Texas, you don't have alimony. And uh, so- Tell me, even with the good background you had, that had to be some of the darkest times in your it life. It was. It was. It had to be a crushing. It was. It was a crushing. It was a brokenness. It was uh, doing away with anything and everything that I held dear to me. And, uh, you know, and then it, you, you deal with that. Then you get diagnosed with breast cancer. And then you go to the counselors. The counselors say there's absolutely no hope. You will never get over this uh, because in addition to the homosexuality and different things that went along with that, there's a lot of other things that you have to deal with. Number one, he was a pastor. And number two, he was your children's pastor and their father. And dealing with that and a lot of other things that go on so in that lifestyle. So tell me, all right, so you get this diagnosis, you don't have time to pity yourself. <clears throat> what do you do about it? Well, you go before God and, uh, and you petition the Lord. And so, the first thought, you know, if anybody's ever been diagnosed with cancer, the first thought is, okay, let's see, I want these kind of flowers. I want a pink roses on the casket, a white casket, wearing pink. You know too much. How could you have done that, Joan? That's exactly the first thought. Okay. It didn't stay. Oh, I knew okay. enough to get rid of the thought, but not for it to stay, okay? I mean, and I knew enough for it to, to get rid of it and to hold those thoughts captive, uh, according to the Word of God. And I realized that, you know, in, within a few months, I'd have been in the ground. If I had not said no, God has called me. If nothing else, my children need me. And you know, and they were they were teenagers at the time, and it's like you know, I I need to do 
what I can do for them. And I would force feed myself because I was too sick. I, I was sickened, too sickened to eat. But I force fed myself in order to, you know, to maintain, to, to, to survive, basically. And uh, the counselors would say I would never get over it because there was a whole lot more involved in homosexual activity rather than just affairs and that lifestyle. And then the children blame me for the divorce because I was the one that had filed. And so then, you know, then they're mad at me for destroying the home. And then we move out of this home into this little bitty home that's like one third the size of the original home and, you know, and, and so forth and so on. And then the CPA says, you know, you're not going to make it financially. You can't make it. And the only way that you possibly could make it is if you quit tithing and for sure quit giving offerings. So um, I changed CPAs. <laughs> and, uh, Good for you. <laughs> yeah, because I knew I couldn't make it if I, if I quit tithing and giving offerings. And I know that because of my giving, uh, that God took care of me financially, supernaturally. What about the breast cancer? And well, a couple of months um, in, in going and doing this and so forth. And uh, when I went back, all this, the, uh, the darkness, the scarring, the everything on the sonogram just wasn't there. I, I don't understand. Where'd it go? God just took it away. What'd the doctor say? They actually um, asked me not to come back there to have any more mammograms there because they couldn't explain it. You're saying even the scar? The scars from the, from the biopsies. They couldn't even find the, when I went they back. They thought you weren't the same person, I imagine. Mm -hmm. And they thought that they had made a mistake and misdiagnosed me before. But I was on the examining table and I'm the one that the sonogram actually slipped. And I was watching because I find medicine and things like that very fascinating. And I looked and I said, what is that? She goes, oh, nothing. I said, put it back on there. I want to see what that is. And, uh, and so, you know, it's, it's all there. It's, you know, the, the, the whole bit. And I knew exactly where it was. And it was an accident that they found it. And so that was a very much a very alone time in my life. I can imagine, but I can also imagine there are many watching us right now that have loved ones or themselves. You have cancer, the same God that healed Joan, I believe, is going to heal you. He just healed someone's back right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't go away because this woman knows how to grab hold of God for you for a miracle. We'll be right back. Hello, YouTube, Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Seven back surgeries healed. Joan, you were telling me about someone you prayed for. Yes. This was just recent. Yeah, recently I prayed for this lady and she had had seven back surgeries and she was on a morphine pump because of the pain. Hmm. And it was so intense that she could hardly even survive and much less work or do anything else, even live. And I prayed for her a few months ago. She was totally, completely healed, got a hold of the new book, which we're going to be talking about in just a few minutes. And she is now going out, laying hands on the sick because she realized that the healing power of God was not just reserved for a few, but the healing power of God is, is for everybody who believe, according to Mark. And, uh, and it was, it's incredible what God's doing. Well, well this is sort of uh, the way I call it, and it actually says it, it's, it's a handbook. And I have to tell you, I've never seen a book that not only tells you what the root causes of most diseases are, but teaches you uh, what you're doing is you're mentoring people yes, on how to heal the world. sick. So is, this woman goes into the hospital. I understand she takes your book with her. She, she takes the book with her and they're all getting healed. It is so exciting. And what's neat is that she goes to this church and, uh, and, and they get hospital calls and different members of the church and so forth get sick and, and either sick at their home or come forward for prayer or whatever. And they go, come up here, come up here. You pray for them. And they're getting her praying for them. And she's up there and she's got her book and she's going, okay, you have this. And you know, in the name of Jesus, and these people are getting healed as she does it. What about that man with this stroke? 
that was so exciting. That was about a year and a half ago, and uh, it was just absolutely an incredible situation that happened. He came in, he had a head brace on, a neck brace on, and he couldn't bend, he couldn't walk, and, and he, he had a cane, and, and he would you know have to be helped up on the platform, and was paralyzed on his, I believe it was his left side, and just absolutely phenomenal. And in a matter of moments, just literally just a few minutes, he was instantly healed. The following day, that actually at the end of the uh, ministry time, we asked him, you know, you know, check for the pain, do this, raise your arm, because he couldn't raise his arm, and God healed his arm, and he goes, I can wiggle my toes. I can wiggle my toes. Everybody wiggle your toes. Just take a moment, wiggle your toes. I'm doing that. I know. It's like, thank God that you can wiggle your toes. And, <laughs> and he hadn't done I, it in I'll six tell you years. What. God has, has just shown up. God has just come into the studio, and I believe as you see this miracle, exercise your faith for the miracle that Expect you need your right back now. To be healed. I'm going to take a look at it. Well, I have three things. I had a stroke six years ago, and you had what? A stroke. Stroke. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And um, I recently had surgery. I had a disc removed. I had a fractured disc in my neck. I had it removed, and they've also found uh, signs of multiple sclerosis. So. Okay. And how long ago did you have the disc removed from your neck? Uh, be three weeks Wednesday. Okay. Well, you did notice that you know his back was fused and he couldn't mm -hmm. bend over, and then he got started right. bending over. So that's kind of cool. So do you have? I know it's really cool, not just kind of. Do you have pain in your neck? Um, just uncomfortable where they where they cut me up here and then where they fuse it together. I still feel where that is. Okay. Um, where else do you have pain in your body? I don't have pain. I have lost. I've lost my left leg because of my stroke. My lower left leg. Okay. Uh, and I have weakness in my le right leg because of the pressure from the disc being broken. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for replacing this disc in Jesus' name. I command the base of the skull to line up with every vertebrae in this back in Jesus' name. Father, where the surgeons have gone in and cut, you can repair. Yes. In Jesus' name, and I command Jesus. all that pain to go. In Jesus' name. The damage that was caused by the stroke, Father, I speak total restoration into this body, specifically into the left side, all the way down the leg. In Jesus' name. I speak life, health, and wholeness back into this leg. Okay, you're starting to feel in your toes? Yeah. Turn, turn this one. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, here we go. We get to do exercise. Hallelujah. Oh, doesn't that feel good? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> he could move his toes, but now he's standing on it. Yeah, could do that. <laughs> it got good. God is good. Wow. I've never, I haven't moved my foot in six years. How long? Six years. You haven't moved your foot because of the stroke? Yeah. Oh my. See, I didn't know that, but isn't that cool? Yeah. I mean, that's like real exciting. No wonder he's really excited about that one. Let's do that again. Um, isn't that fun? It's just amazing. I'm moving my toes for the first time. You know, Joan, it, it, I, I don't know about you, but I get so excited when I see a miracle, because the person behind the miracle is Almighty God, and for too long, we have not known how to minister mm -hmm. healing. God's the one that heals. How in the world did you and Michael Henson know so much to put this in a book? Experience. Because I've never, but I've never seen one put together, and, and I've seen a lot of healing books that I mean, you literally teach people how to get healed themselves and then to heal mm -hmm. other people. Yes. That's what's going on. That's exactly. It's called empowering the saints and getting them equipped to know how to do it, giving them a background on how to do it. And, uh, and, and just like, you know, watching that guy get healed, it was just, it was just like it just happened again. And I get so excited. And I've been doing, you know, with traveling with mom and dad and so forth in the miracle ministry for over 35 years. 
I still get excited when every single person gets healed. Now, Just, and Michael Henson has been 25 years. Right. So that's a lot of years over of experience. Yeah, over 55, almost 60 years experience between the two of us. We put into a book what has what the diseases are, how to pray for them, what has worked for us, and it will work for people that, that either read the book, people are reading the book, and we had a lady that was reading about high blood pressure. She says, I have high blood pressure. And she was reading it, and and with I mean, just she's not had to take her high blood pressure medicine because it was as needed, uh, totally uh, completely listen, healed. Get the book, but I'm more excited right now. As God has come into the studio, we're taking commercial break, and uh, someone's neck was healed. We're going to come back, and I'm going to ask Joan to pray. And I believe this is your moment. This yeah. is your time. Now is the acceptable time. I'll be right back after this. We now return to It's Supernatural. I am so glad that the Spirit of the Living God has invaded this studio right now because that means God is about ready to invade in your home. You will feel the manifest presence of the Living God. Now, I know it's not necessary to feel to be healed, but I tell you, this is God's hour to pour out His Spirit and Joan, if God could heal you, well, you were the hunter's daughter. Maybe that's why. Maybe you're his favorite. I, I know I am his favorite, but that's another story. <laughs> but um, I know that it, my, my feeling that if God can heal me, God can heal anybody. If God can heal my finances, God can heal my heart, God can heal everything, then God can do it for you. And, He's and, no and respecter you, of and person. And you know what's so wonderful, Joan? You sincerely meant what came out of your mouth, and it is true. You are God's favorite, but mm -hmm. guess what? I am God's favorite mm -hmm. too, and even better than that, you, God, see, we look at God like in a human standard. No, 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 God is pure love, and I tell you, you may have never heard this before, but you are God's favorite. You are so special to God. He has felt every one of your hurts. He has taken upon himself every one of your diseases. Joan, someone I know that can go through this book, but right now, someone shouldn't have to put up with pain another minute. Speak to them. I agree. God has healed me in so many areas. I, I broke my back about six years ago and God healed my broken back. I went through about three months of unbelievable pain but it gave me compassion for those that have back problems. And God healed me of that broken back and put the bone back together and it was incredible with what God did. But God healed my heart. And there's so much pain in the hearts of the people. What I want you to do, I want you to lay your hand on the part of your body that hurts. If it's your back, lay it on your back. If you have pain in your shoulder, you have a hard time moving your shoulder, if you have a headache, put your hand on your head. And I'm gonna pray for God to come right through into your living room or wherever you happen to be watching this program and touch you and heal your body. And I'm gonna pray for cancer, I'm gonna pray for a variety of things, but expect God to move on your behalf. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I send the word of healing through this camera into the homes and, and the congregation, the audience that are watching this program today. In the name of Jesus, I speak health and wholeness, healing in every area of their life, not just physically, but restoration of their life, of their family, of their homes, in every area of their life. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I command all that pain to go in Jesus' name. I speak new vertebrae into the neck, into the back. In Jesus' name, I command the pelvic area to line up. I command that arthritis in the knees to be gone and the pain to be gone in Jesus' name. And the ankles, and I even, I even feel that there's some people that are having pain in their toes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I command that pain to go. Father, right now I speak to the health and wholeness of their shoulders. The new rotator cuffs in, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I command that pain to go. The carpal tunnels to be healed, all the pain in their joints, all the way up, the pain in their head. I command that spirit of migraine headaches to be gone in Jesus' name. 
that fibromyalgia, which is a terrible disease, in Jesus' name, I command the electrical and magnetic frequencies in their bodies to be in complete harmony and balance in Jesus' name. Father, I command those that, that are suffering with diabetes, I speak new pancreases into them in Jesus' name. Those that have cancer, put your hand on wherever the cancer is, in particular breast cancer. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I curse that cancer, I command it to be gone in Jesus' name. I speak health and wholeness in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, cancer, you are cursed in Jesus' name. From the very root commanded to dry up, like the tree was commanded to dry up, so shall that dry up even to the very bottom of the roots in Jesus' name. I speak health and wholeness over every area. There's, there's people that are dealing with problems in their marriage. One of the greatest problems, the three main problems in marriage is if you're selfish, selfish, or selfish. Give your selfishness to God and see not just what I, I can get out of the marriage, but what I can put into the marriage, and you will see your marriages turn around. I speak healing to marriages. In Jesus' name, I speak healing to finances, those that are facing bankruptcy. How do you, how do you get out of bankruptcy? You give your way out of debt. You give your way out of bankruptcy. I don't know how it works. I know that Math was my best subject. One plus one equals two. But you know what? With God, one plus one may equal seven. And I don't know how it works, but God promises to supply all of our needs in the name of Jesus. I command health and wholeness to the eyes, to the ears in Jesus name. There's somebody here that, that, that is watching that has a, a real problem with warts. I mean, unbelievable problem with warts and uh, eczema. In the name of Jesus, I speak health and wholeness to that, those skin, and I command those viruses to go, the extra skin cells to go. <clears throat> In the name of Jesus, I curse that MS. I speak health and wholeness to those bodies. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' I, name. I believe that this was not just a religious, cosmetic tradition that just occurred. I believe that people are having tremendous healings but you know people that you'd like to pray for. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm just wondering, has God shown you or perhaps your parents about what's about ready to happen uh, here in the United States in reference to healing? I, yes, uh, God has put it in, in my heart and the ministry team that head up the ministry, uh, number one. But I want to just go back one second because I cannot forget this. It's important for everybody out there who is watching to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you've got pain in your elbow, say, thank you, Jesus, and then move it. And you'll realize that the pain is gone. The pain is gone in your head. But it's very important that you say, thank you, Jesus. Regarding that, we were talking last night, uh, several people um, at the table and so forth. We were just talking over some ideas. What direction do you think we're going to be going next uh, in the next wave of, re of uh, revival and so forth? And I personally believe that, number one, it's healing because people will come to the Lord through signs and wonders. It's not just, you know, you can preach all you want, but they want to see a living, a real Jesus. And when they see people are getting healed just like that, it's, it's phenomenal with what happens. And many times people come in and to the services and they don't believe in miracles, but they come with their arms crossed and everything like that. And God just comes in and they see God doing miracle after miracle and then they give their heart to the Lord. But it's not just <clears throat> them coming to uh, the services that I head up. It's taking the word of God, taking his healing power out of the four walls of the church, taking it to the marketplace. But Joan, you have in your handbook principles. I mean, it's not just go do it. It's how to do it, how to pray for specific conditions. What is really the root cause? Exactly. I mean, it's a step by step handbook, but there's something going on right now. And I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you there is such a pouring out of God's healing virtue of God's love, and he wants to heal the greatest wound, that emptiness, that, that thing inside of you that says there's got to be something more. The person that's ready to commit suicide, stop. I tell you that 
God loves you. I tell you, no matter what you've done, you are God's favorite. I tell you that if you surrender, and that's the key word, if you surrender, tell God you're sorry for your sins, you can't stop it, but God has the power to set you free. You turn away from your sins and you turn to God, telling him you're sorry, and believe that Jesus is going to come and live right inside of you. Believe that there is a greater purpose for your life. No, it is not too late. No, you have not gone too far. God has me talking to you right now. The presence of God is pouring in like a river. Father, for that person that needs that supernatural touch, whatever arena of their life, pour in Holy Spirit. His Hebrew name is Ruach HaKodesh. Spirit of the living God, flow like a river. Flow into their living rooms, flow, flow into the rooms that they're in right now. Shalom, shalom.